All right, so as we teased out last week, Thursday, we're going to have a more in-depth discussion on the Corporate Transparency Act with Corinne Sprague from Warner Norcross and Judd. So, Corinne, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, and thank you everyone for tuning in and for all you do for your employees, your communities. It's really wonderful to be able to speak with you. Well, Corinne, um, Brian and I have discussed, or whether Brian has, I'm, you know, this is not an area of expertise for me, but we have talked about the Corporate Transparency Act on the show several times, but, you know, you're the expert here, and I'm hoping you can start off by reminding us what the Corporate Transparency Act is and why this is important. Sure, absolutely. So a little bit of background. I'm a corporate attorney, so I'm not the cool attorney to talk to at a party because I don't have fun stories, but new legislation is my time to shine. So the Corporate Transparency Act um, became effective January 1st of this year. So we're about 15 days into it. And it is a new piece of legislation that requires beneficial ownership reporting. And beneficial ownership we'll get into, but it's not just owners. They, they really want to understand who owns or controls business entities in the US. And the reason that this happened, it was kind of international pressure because in the EU and a lot of other, you know, large economic states, um, there is already and was prior to the CTA, a system that required entities to report who owns them and who controls them. And so the concern with the, the lack of this kind of transparency accountability system in the US was that the US would become a place for illicit activity, money laundering, other um, you know, shady uses of funds through LLCs and corporations to occur because we were this last, last jurisdiction standing that didn't have governmental reporting of ownership. So in the past, I know a lot of you small business owners go to open up bank accounts and we love our community bankers and our community credit unions. They're fantastic, but they have huge regulatory obligations that KYC, know your customer, form and then you spend like six days chasing down all the information that you need. That's because really until now, the financial services industry was the gatekeeper. Um, the banks and credit unions were required to gather that information. And that was that was the guardrail we had. We didn't have the government collecting information. So now Financial Crimes Enforcement Network or FinCEN is gathering information on beneficial ownership as a means to crack down, monitor, and where where they turn it up, you know, shut down illicit activity in the U.S. through, you know, money and activities by corporations and LLCs and similar entities. Um, good. So thank you for that very thorough overview. I, I think in particular, our members are curious, um, you know, what they're going to need to do next, but why do small business owners really need to pay attention here? So a lot of the largest entities are exempt. There is an exemption so that your entity does not have to report under the CTA if it has more than 20 employees, so at least 21, and a physical place of business in the U.S. and over $5 million in revenue as reported on your last tax return. Now, there are some tricky things, right? You could have a really large company, but all your employees are housed in an employee leasing entity over here and not the operating entity. And it has to be at the operating entity. You need to have 21 or more employees, but for small businesses, a lot of small businesses don't have 21 FTEs and or $5 million reported income on the last the last tax return that was filed. So for many, many small businesses, this is going to be an issue. We also run into a lot of time in my practice, I work really closely with family owned businesses. And a lot of families have an entity that's their business and then an entity that's their real estate. And then that real estate entity leases property to the business or just holds some investment property or our entrepreneurs have little, you know, they're entrepreneurial people. They have little side ventures. They might own a rental property that they keep an LLC for liability protection. And all of those entities, unless they're exempt because they're, you know, publicly traded, really large, or, you know, like in the financial services industry or other areas that are heavily regulated and therefore exempt, are gonna have this new reporting obligation. So beginning, if your entity was in existence as of 1231, 2023, you have until New Year's Eve of this year, 2024, to file your first report. Then once you file your report, if any information changes, 
you have, a, have an, uh, an obligation to update that information within 30 days. So the nice thing is we have kind of a long on-ramp to get used to this reporting, but it is here and it's here to stay. And it's just another piece of paperwork that businesses aren't used to doing and business owners focus on the day-to-day -day needs of their employees, customers, suppliers, communities, and not necessarily, you know, check this little regulatory box, but it's an important regulatory box to check. So, you know, I think a lot of our members are, you know, maybe they already have this handled and they're good to go, but if people are just unsure of what they need to do next, is there a sample or a guide of how to complete this documentation available to the average business owner? There are, and they're free, which is wonderful. So you can always call your attorney, your CPA, and I'm sure that they're able to walk you through it. But if you go to FinCEN, F-I-N-C-E-N dot gov slash B-O-I, that's FinCEN's kind of landing page where there are a lot of resources and there's actually a, a link that it's a big, big rectangle that says reference materials. They've prepared a really detailed guide for small businesses to help answer questions. So that, that compliance guide is a small entity compliance guide. Don't hit print right away because it's like 60 something pages, but it, it has really solid answers to your most basic questions. Um, for each entity, you need to report Entity information, which is going to be, you know, principal address, taxpayer identification number, jurisdiction of formation. And then for each beneficial owner, you report name, residential address, date of birth, driver's license, passport, other government issued ID number, the jurisdiction that issued that ID and a copy of the ID. So if you have a lot of beneficial owners, that can add up pretty quickly. And your beneficial owners don't have to actually have ownership. So if you own 25% of the outstanding equity or a majority of the voting equity, you're boom, you're a beneficial owner. But it's ownership or control. So if you have a non-owner executive that's CEO, CFO, general counsel, or performing those tasks regardless, you know, you can call them a president instead of a CEO, but if this individual is your chief executive of your business that would count. And they don't have to have any equity to be a beneficial owner. They're presumed to be a beneficial owner due to the degree of control they exert. So the small business um, compliance guide that FinCEN has put out, really, uh, except in situations where you've got really complex ownership structures, it is a pretty helpful guide. And then these reports are just submitted online. We have been telling clients, hold off, don't do it January 1st, because I don't trust that a new government website is going to work really well right off the bat. And FinCEN wasn't letting us see it until January 1st. But we've played around with it. We've gotten in there and it's it's pretty user friendly to the extent that, you know, upload, uploading a picture of your driver's license to the government is user friendly. But it is fairly accessible. Um, I think that if you're capable of running a business, you're more than capable of submitting this report. And you said earlier they we had this full calendar year in which to comply. Is that correct? So if your entity was in existence as of December 31st of 2023, you have this full calendar year to file your first report. If you form a new entity in 2024, that entity has 90 days from the date of formation, which is when the articles of organization, articles of incorporation, certificate of incorporation, whatever document you file with Michigan Lara or in every other state, the Secretary of State, to form that entity. As soon as that entity is officially formed under state law, you have 90 days from that moment. Going forward, that's going to be only 30 starting in 2025. But because this is a new reporting system, and because I think FinCEN got a lot of comment letters saying, please don't trip people up here, give them time to figure it out. Um, we've got 90 days for entities formed in 2024. All right. Are there any other tips or tricks or information you think would be helpful for the small business owners uh, watching this? The only thing I can say, and I, I don't think FinCEN did us any favors, is remembering that beneficial owner doesn't just mean owner. And it is so counterintuitive to think beneficial owner, and here's this executive that has no equity at all. Um, so remembering that when they say owner, they mean own or is in charge of making critical decisions for the entity. Um, I would also recommend if you've got kind of complex trusts, 
that are, you know, layers and layers of trust that own your businesses, trusts themselves are not formed by a filing with the state. So a trust is not going to have a reporting obligation. But figuring out beneficial ownership of an operating company or a holding company, whatever, and a, a company that has kind of a complex ownership structure with trusts, the way that decisions are made in that trust, who the trustee is and how decisions are made um, can really dictate who the beneficial owner is deemed to be. So if you had a complex ownership structure with complex trust set up, presumably you have a trust on a state planning attorney that you're working with. Talk to that person and make sure you understand exactly whose information needs to be reported. Um, and then to simplify reporting going forward, entities and individuals can get what's called a FinCEN identifier number. And I think this is really handy um, because any change in the information previously reported to FinCEN has to be reported again in an update within 30 days. So I'm getting married next year. My last name might change. We're figuring out whether I'm going to change my last name. But if my last name changes or if I move and I was a beneficial owner whose information was reported, that entity has an obligation to update the report. But if the entity instead said, just get a FinCEN identifier number and we'll send in your name and your identifier number, then at least for people just changing primary residential addresses, you're not tripping into a compliance issue when the business owner is going about their business and doesn't think, oh yeah, when my CFO moved, my entity had a reporting obligation and now I've missed it and I'm facing, you know, potential per day penalties. We're hoping that enforcement is kind of common sense based, but you don't want to be in a position where you're trying to argue against statutory penalties. Absolutely. Well, Corinne, thank you so much for breaking this down for us today and for our members. I know we've had a lot of requests um, to cover this in more detail. So we appreciate your time. We appreciate Warner Norcross and Judd's partnership over the years and look forward to working with you all um, as we continue into 2024. So thanks again for joining Wonderful. us. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Have a good one.